chapter 5 through the Holy Bible. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17 says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Second Peter chapter 1, verses 20 and 21 says, No prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation or origin, for prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. The principal way through which God our Heavenly Dad speaks is through the Holy Bible. The Bible is not a literature book, neither is it merely an historical book of the Jews. The Holy Bible contains the Word of God, penned by men who are inspired by God. The Word of God in the Bible is unerring, infallible, and final. The Bible is not originated by man, but by God who inspired chosen men to write it. The Bible contains general instructions by which we should live our lives in righteousness. The Word of God illuminates our path and grants us direction. The Bible is like the operating manual of an electronic of an electronic equipment, showing how to operate the equipment to accomplish the objectives of the manufacturer. The manual usually contains instructions for the equipment's operation, maintenance, and repairs. Operators and technicians of, often refer to the manual for guidance. The Holy Bible serves a similar purpose for man. It shows us what to do and what not to do. To, proper, to prosper we are to remember it is God that gives us power to get wealth. We are to work hard like an ant, like the ant. We are to pay our tithes and give offerings to God to receive more and avoid the devourer. Every man who follows these biblical instructions will prosper. To enjoy our marriage, God commands monogamy, one man, one wife. A man should love his wife like himself. A wife should be reverent and submissive to the husband as unto the Lord. These are panacea to a happy marriage. Any couple who does this is bound to succeed in marriage and be fulfilled. Same-sex marriage or homosexuality is a contraption of Satan to provide an alternative to God's instructions. It is unnatural, evil, and sinful. God, who instituted marriage, never intended a man to marry a man or a woman to be sexually involved with another woman. If the Holy Bible already reveals God's will about a particular matter, there is no need to seek another voice to tell you what to do. God's voice will never contradict God's word. Seeking further revelation about issues already expressly provided for in the Bible may be a result of ignorance, unbelief, or hard hardness, that is, knowing God's will but wishing God's will was different. God will never change his word. What God desires is that his word will change you. Are you seeking God's voice, whether you, a believer, should marry an unbeliever? God's voice is his word. Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, 14. Are you praying to hear whether to divorce? Are you praying to hear whether to divorce your wife or husband or not? God's voice is his word. For the Lord God of Israel says that he hates divorce. Malachi chapter 2 verse 16. Are you considering whether you should live apart from your wife, husband, or not? God says, therefore what God has joined together, let not man separate. Matthew chapter 19 verse 6. Are you considering a move in your business or any other aspect of your life which promises success? 
and prosperity, but will involve you compromising a little in Christian ethics. This is God's voice. Blessed is a man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Psalm chapter 1, verse 1. Many times when you need to hear God's voice, He has spoken to you through His Word. God speaks to you while reading or hearing His Word. At times, He reminds you of His Word you have read or heard before. Every Christian should cultivate the habit of reading and studying the Scriptures daily. Meditate on the Scriptures and practice Scripture memorization. This process stores in you the Word of God which the Holy Spirit will bring to your remembrance when you need it. Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Psalms 119.11 Store the word of God in your heart and the Holy Spirit will remind you when you need it. If you have stored nothing in your heart, the Holy Spirit will remind you of nothing. A little warning. You might be surprised to learn that Satan can also bring scriptures to your memory to back up what he is telling you to do. Again, you might be surprised to learn that Satan can also bring scriptures to your memory to back up what he is telling you to do. Satan quoted the scriptures while you tempted Jesus in the wilderness. In the first two temptations, Jesus resisted the devil by quoting scriptures. On the third occasion, Satan now backed up his suggestion to Jesus with scripture. If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge over you to keep you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. How do you know a scripture that comes to your mind is from God or from Satan? The following checklist is helpful. Number one, what is the purpose of the voice? In the above illustration, Satan wanted Jesus to prove that he was the Son of God. Jesus did not need to prove any point because a few days earlier, his heavenly Father declared publicly, you are my beloved Son, and you I am well pleased. When a scripture is dropped into your mind, check the purpose, the voice, wants you to achieve it is consistent with God's pur- is it consistent with God's purposes number two is it confirmed by at least one other scripture by the mouth of two or three witnesses every word shall be established second Corinthians chapter 13 verse 1 what the voice is asking you to do must not contradict any other scripture for example a voice could quote The scripture in Isaiah 61, 6, you shall eat the riches of the Gentiles to encourage you to defraud your employer who is not a Christian. What you are being asked to do contradicts another scripture, Exodus 20, 15, you shall not steal. That voice that asks you to defraud your employer cannot be God's voice. God's voice will never contradict God's word. Number three, will it glorify God? Whatever you do, do all in the glory of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. To know whether a voice is God's or not, what the scripture instructs you to do must, in the prevailing circumstances, bring glory to God. As believers, we should covet, as believers, we should covet to know the word of God. We should desire the sincere milk of God's word, which helps our spiritual growth. Otherwise, we might be deceived into error. Jesus answered and said to them, You are mistaken, not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God. Matthew chapter 22, verse 29. The word of God is a lamp to our feet. It shines unto our circumstances to reveal what we need to know. God's word is a light to our path. It illuminates our path to give us direction and guidance. And the principle, unerring and 
incontrovertible way through which God speaks to his children is through his word. God's word is his voice. Psalm chapter 119, 105. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path.